Live from the WCTV studios, this is Eyewitness News at Noon. Coverage you can count on. New developments in the death investigation of a Bluntstown woman who died at the Calhoun Liberty Hospital. Good afternoon, I'm Sean Dunight. And I'm Mark Myers. The police officer involved in 57-year-old Barbara Dawson's arrest will not face charges in the case. That ruling coming from the state attorney for the 14th Judicial Circuit, Glenn Hess. Dawson was arrested in December, you remember, and put in handcuffs after refusing to leave the hospital, saying she did not feel well enough to leave. Now, she collapsed in the parking lot and died later that morning. Hess says that Officer John Tadlock's actions were appropriate under the circumstances and there was no criminal law violation. A quiet neighborhood in Tallahassee rocked to its core by a mystery, a murder mystery. We're still waiting to hear about a motive in the case, and so far police have been mum on the details surrounding the suspect's arrest. Well, Sigfredo Garcia was arrested Wednesday night in Miami Beach. He made his first appearance in court yesterday. He's facing a murder charge, yet no other information has been released, including evidence or even a motive. According to Garcia, he did not even know he was a suspect. I didn't know I needed a lawyer until yesterday. You didn't oh. know you had a warrant out for murder? No, ma'am. Well, the judge ordered Garcia to be held without bond. Authorities say once the investigation ends, they will be able to release more details in that case. Many of you took to our Facebook page to discuss this case. Ashley Holland says things like this make me cry happy tears in the sense so glad they made an arrest. Others like Fran Della Porta want to know more. She says in part, wow. Hope they release the full story. Interesting for sure. We'll, of course, keep you up to date with the very latest both on air and online at WCTV.TV. One person is dead after a crash in Thomas County. Deputies tell us two cars crashed on U.S. 19 just north of State Road 188. Well, these viewer photos show extensive damage to the cars. One person died in that crash. Crews closed the northbound lanes to clear the scene. The road is now back open. Now, kind of an amazing story for you. A South Georgia man is alive after being trapped for days under his motorcycle, trapped actually for more than a week. That's right. 63 year old Roland Goff was found trapped underneath his 2003 Honda VTX 1300 motorcycle near his home. Well, he was there for eight days, according to authorities. His friend became alerted when he was on social media. According to GSP, the last thing Goff says that he remembers is driving on his driveway and traveling off the shoulder of the dirt road. Lee well, is currently in stable condition at the South Georgia Medical Center. A grand jury has indicted a Tallahassee man for the murder of a 10 month old baby. Dewan Barnes was uh, indicted yesterday for first degree murder and aggravated child abuse. Barnes was arrested May the 6th for the death of his girlfriend's son. He called 911 and told police the child was throwing up, but the medical examiner later said the baby suffered a severed aorta and a snapped spinal cord. Authorities believe they have found the remains of a missing Florida woman. The partial remains of Trisha Todd were located Thursday, buried about three feet deep in a container at a preserve in Martin County. Investigators say that Todd's ex-husband, Stephen Williams, directed them to the location. Williams is charged with her murder. Police say he claims he pushed her during an argument and she fell and struck her head. Williams has accepted a plea deal in that case. Some registered voters in Leon County will soon be relocating to new polling locations. The Supervisor Elections is mailing out new voter information cards to more than 115,000 registered voters affected by recent changes made to precinct locations. But not all voters are affected by those changes. A new card will only be sent to those affected. Well, you can look at the map of all the precincts and districts on leonvotes.org slash maps. The deadline to register to vote for Florida's primary election is August first. Well, for weeks, Donald Trump has been the presumptive Republican nominee, but this morning, CBS declaring he actually had enough delegates needed to win the party's nomination. Trump has finally secured 1,237 delegates, they say. He posted a picture yesterday aboard his private jet with a McDonald's burger. Now he's preparing for the fight ahead. Trump offered a preview of a 15-state general election strategy. Energy to be put in the states where it could go either way. We're going to focus on New York. I was in the state of Washington. We're going to play heavy as an example in California. 
Those three states have not backed a Republican in over 20 years. Trump's counting on his unconventional, con, excuse me, unconventional style to change that. In his North Dakota speech, Trump also took aim at Hillary Clinton and pledged more support for the fossil fuel industry. Well, if you're planning on traveling this weekend for Memorial Day, you certainly won't be alone. A AAA estimates that more than 38 million drivers will hit the highways and interstates this holiday weekend. That would be the highest number of road travelers since 2005 and second highest on record. One route of travel, though, that might be a little hectic is by air. More than 2.5 million people are expected to travel by air this Memorial Day weekend. The TSA is recommending that passengers arrive at least two hours early. Chris Van Cleve has more from Reagan National outside Washington. Step on over, step on over. Good, the first real test of the summer travel season is underway for the TSA. Airports are bracing for record crowds as more than 231 million passengers fly from June through August. That's 95,500 more flyers a day than last year. We're going to keep passengers moving this weekend, but we're also going to keep them safe. That is our principal responsibility. The seasonal surge comes as the shorthanded TSA struggles to keep the security lines moving. Year to date, more than 70,000 American Airlines customers have missed flights due to excessive wait times. On Thursday, American Airlines Senior Vice President Kerry Filipovich told Congress more than 40,000 checked bags have also missed flights because of screening delays. It appears TSA did not adjust its staffing model after screening protocols were changed. This is unreal. As we saw last week at Chicago's Midway Airport, patience is already running thin as wait times have at points surpassed two hours. The nation's airports are worried it'll get worse as travelers start taking summer vacations. Now, because the summer travel season means more people are flying, there are fewer open seats. So if somebody misses a flight today, the airlines say it could be Saturday, even Sunday, before they're able to be reaccommodated on another flight. Chris Van Cleve, CBS News, Reagan National Airport, Virginia. All right, to help with the possible delay and passenger fatigue at the Atlanta Hartsfield International Airport, a volunteer violinist will be on site to calm everybody's nerves. Hopefully that, that helps. Hopefully it won't <laughs> sound like, like a cat that's yes, not happy. Exactly. All right, coming up, uh, President Obama does what no president before him has. We will take you to Hiroshima. And Snakes Alive will show you what was waiting for a man during his trip to the bathroom. But first, Rob is here with that Memorial Day weekend forecast, Rob. And you know what? We've got more of the same to look forward to, at least for the first part of this weekend. The second part, including Memorial Day, still kind of sort of up in the air. Let's get a load of some of the temperatures we're staring at already. 85 at the airport in Tallahassee. And gonna keep warming. Look at all the 81. Bainbridge, Camilla, Moultrie, Tifton, Thomasville, Valdosta, Monticello, Carabelle, all at 81. Everybody north of 80 at noontime. And I do think most of us got a pretty good shot to get up over 90 for the fourth straight day. I think we make it five before we talk about some changes coming. I've got the uh, NOAA hurricane outlook for 2016. It's part of the full forecast. We'll have it in just a bit.